Let's go with all the peeps filling up the screen. Oh, yeah. yes. Push the gallery so you can Everybody's see. Everybody's pouring in like <laughs> honey. Boom. Hi, guys. Hello, hello. Hello, hello. Welcome, welcome. Yes, indeed. This is great. I love you guys. Oh, I see some new names. Okay, let's go ahead and get started. Welcome to the Sid City Social Club for Tuesday, February 1st. All right, over to Sid. Thank you very much indeed. Hi, everybody. Good to see you all. Let me put it onto a single thing view, whatever that thing is. It's the first day in, in the United States of um, Black History Month, uh, which comes around every year. And for those of you who don't know what it is, it's basically a month in which we celebrate or try and remember the contribution that um, people of color have made to this um, country. Lots of people are remembered and lots of events happen. And I thought what I'd do as just a, as a kind of, because I've always, you know, we talk a lot, there's been a thing in, in the States and I don't know if it's been, it's been everywhere else, but I know in the UK it happens. And I think in Australia too, that it's been a big hoo-ha, a big uh, kerfuffle about this thing called critical race theory. Um, and it has been, and I've been really puzzled about it because everyone's back and forth and there's been a demonstrations and it's led on to kind of really to uh, sort of a, a, it's morphed into a into a discussion about whether or not kids should be wearing masks in school and it's basically liberalism in, in universities and all sorts of terrible things i just thought i'd give you my three cents uh of what i think it means for anybody who doesn't really know and um, you probably know much better than me um so you can chime in and, and definitely correct me but on what basically it is and why it seems to be blown right out of um, proportion in some 36 states in the United States who are trying to ban critical race theory being taught at school level. It is basically a group of academics and activists and sociologists and anybody, frankly, who wants to chip in, who wants to uh, have a voice, uh, thinking um, analytically about why racism uh, is endemic in the United States and uh, why it has been so hard to progress beyond a certain barrier. And the crucial thing about it is that it is not actually about, well, it is about race, but people, proponents of CRT, critical race theory, believe that race is a construct. They don't believe race exists. It's been made up by human beings. We are not biologically different in any way. Um, and that we are socioculturally different, and that has, and that is why race has proliferated. So, given that, um, they think that there's no basis for racism, except socioeconomic, for, except for socioeconomic reasons. So, there's kind of it's it's a self perpetuating system, and um, people that have no reason to know that they're racist or part of a racist system. Um, because really, it isn't individual, it's society-wide. Um, the other important thing about it is that um, there's a belief within the CRT community that, um, that it's an intersectional theory. So it's not just people of color, it's all minorities of disadvantaged people, whether it's the queer community or the disabled community, there is enormous, they, they, all, they all have an affiliation to the theory because they are all taken in by the they basically are all victims of the same, the same problem. So just two cents to give you that because it's Black History Month. That's my Black History Month thing. Um, we don't have a lot of people of color in, in the club, unfortunately, but that doesn't matter. We've got lots of other people represent, representatives of, of different minorities here. And CRT is about all of us, um, really, um, and about doing something about the legal framework in a country where we just refuse to bend to pro progress, to refuse to change our minds, refuse to move on. And I suspect, as I just mentioned, that it has something to do with economics. So um, there you go. Let's, let's uh, have a chat to somebody. Thanks, Professor Sid. That's just my two cents. I, so there will be people here who know way more than me about it, but it's one of those things that I'd like to, you might go, well, what the hell is this thing, critical race theory? Um, it's actually not as weird as it sounds. Let's go talk to Randy. We haven't caught up with them in a while. Randy! Hi! Hello! I feel like it's been a very long time. It's been a very long time. It's really good to see you <laughs> again. How are you? 
Um, good, good. I've missed the social club so much, but um, I finally have like time and brain space to like return. So it's oh, very nice. Fantastic. Have you been okay? You, be, you well? Um, I am now. Actually, it's funny that you sort of talk about like the education system and like race and all of those sorts of things. As all well, of that because... horrible stuff that is so uncomfortable. <laughs> well, yeah, because I sort of um, end up having to teach that to my students. Um, okay. it's, it's interesting because they have taken a lot of very important things um, out of the curriculum. Yeah. Um, for example, like history classes here don't teach about the Holocaust anymore. That's not part of the like mandated curriculum. In between like trying to teach during the pandemic, which was its own sort of thing, we were all sort of just like scrambling to try and uh, sneak all of those things back into the curriculum <laughs> via yeah. like text selection and activities and conversations that we could try and have like in classrooms to just cover all of this very important stuff that was somehow just like not in the curriculum anymore. It's so weird, isn't it? Because I mean, everybody, I've been a parent and some other people have been, obviously a lot of people are parents. And the one thing I wanted for my kid was to be better than me, to do better than me, to, to, to evolve beyond me. And it's odd to then stop your kid even having the chance of evolving beyond you by refusing to teach them things that are uncomfortable for you. It just makes absolutely no sense to me. It's, um yeah, kind of disturbing. And I mean, the school itself is kind of like, I don't know, actually, some classes are very white um, and then some classes are quite like multicultural. So it's sort of a mixed bag there, but it's very interesting hearing like the sorts of things white students say about race that are very clearly sort of just parroted from their parents who have passed down you know various views like we talked about um like the Australian view of like World War One we only ever see like white soldiers being depicted when you know quite a lot of those soldiers were indigenous um yeah. there was quite a lot of um aboriginal soldiers that were fighting in that war but they never get depicted and no. then you sort of got like you know a couple of kids down the back being like yeah but why do we need to show that like why does everything have to be about to race and it's like well it just baffles me that like showing things the way that they were stands out enough for it to be seen as an imposition yeah yeah Absolutely. Absolutely. And it's, I think I'm, I'm, the one thing I kind of really like about the, the guys who are fomenting the critical race theorems is that, that is their idea that race is a, is a construct. And it kind of just goes on, you know, there's all sorts of identity issues that are constructed. I mean, there are some basic things that are undeniable, but and all the baggage that comes along with identity, all the baggage that comes with gender, all the baggage that comes with human race and all these preconceptions that then arrive as a result of the fact that we've already been indoctrinated about what it is to expect when you see a person of colour or a trans person or a disabled person. It's boulder dash. <laughs> I kind of worked really hard <laughs> to not... <laughs> to went in some sorts. But it's kind of interesting. Um, and do you have you found that kids are responding? Are, are they are they interested, or are they or do they fight you? Do they what? Where are you at? No, the the <laughs> thing about kids is they want to talk about all of these things. They want to know, and no one is kind of like I guess brave enough to broach those kinds of uncomfortable conversations and yeah. listen to kids who are parroting those kinds of really awful viewpoints and sort of help them like take that next step into like understanding why that's not a great viewpoint to have if you want to be yeah. like a person. <clears throat> I mean I never met a racist kid. Um, I met a bunch of I've met millions of kids who were really unpleasant who would but they if it wasn't my color when I was at school it would be the length of my hair or the, the size of my nose or the shape of my elbows. They will find anything to destroy you with. <laughs> they really don't <laughs> care what it is, but the intellectual notion of racism 
I just don't believe it exists in kids, you know, under 12 or under 10 or at that kind of age. I just think they find reasons to be in cliques and groups for security. You know, they're like, I'm friends with you, so I'll say I hate all these other people. And, um, yeah. could, you know, redheads forever. <laughs> <laughs> The butt end of, you know, and they, reg regardless of race, so there's something there. God helped you if you were at school and you were, uh, had a red, ha red hair. It would, you would get hell. And then as soon as, of course, you left school, you became the most attractive person in the room, which is, hey, go figure. Yeah, I suppose so. I think it's a little bit different as well because I teach high school. So these are like 13 to 18 year olds that. Um, yeah, they're a bit more complicated. Yeah. yeah, there's some interesting things going on there. Although, like, it, it's interesting that. Um, more often now, you know, we'll talk about race and those sorts of things, but like I'm out as being non-binary at school and they all call me mixed Bevan and they use my correct pronouns and everything. And that is that, great. that part, I just think like is new enough to them that they haven't learned anything like how they to haven't react. learned the otherwise. Yeah. They haven't got a problem. Yeah, they, haven't so got to they sort of just reconfigure their hardwire, re hardwire their brains. Hmm. That's wonderful. That's really great. What, how, 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 how is, are you, how's Shannon? Are you guys hanging out? Are you seeing each other? I don't think I've seen Shannon since like April last year. <laughs> oh, so for ages. For yeah, ages, for ages. ages. How's, how's Melbourne? I miss Melbourne. Um, Melbourne's doing its thing, I guess. I haven't really been out. Oh, so um, compounded all of those things last year meant that um, I'm actually not teaching this year. Oh. So I'm sort of just taking some time to like recover my brain. So yeah. like yeah. I kind of checked out a bit at the end of last year and I'm sort of just like gradually getting everything back now. But um, right. Yeah, so I don't really know that much about what's going on in Melbourne right now. Hey, I've you know what? That's just, just fine. I was there for house. a few months and I didn't know what was going on there the whole time I was there. Um, <laughs> but it was still groovy. I really thought it was a cool place. It just, uh, I didn't, it was unfortunate that it was right slap bang in the middle of the worst part of the COVID thing because yeah, we all had to be confined to quarters. You know, we couldn't leave our, our apartments Um and it was a, just such a drag to just not enjoy a country that you go all that way there for, um, whatever it is, 24 hours or something, and you can't even step out except to buy, you know, pasta. That sucked. Yeah. Yeah, that would suck. That's so sad. <laughs> it really was. And Thailand, too. I just sat in my hotel looking out the window. Um, a beautiful view. Hey. I'm lucky enough to have been working, so I'm pretty cool about it. Yeah. Well, hey, speaking of yeah. drag in Melbourne. Yeah. Randy got to do a really cool thing at the mall with a couple of people. What is this? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So they, um, <laughs> there's like this in like the center of the city, there's this big like shopping center called the Emporium where they have like all the fashion designers and stuff there. Um, and they had a bunch of people there for Melbourne Fashion Week. Oh. Um, and so what they did was they sort of set up like a shop front and they had us like in the shop front, like doing our makeup and stuff so people could see like the process and they had like our costumes there and all those sorts of things. Um, and then we just like went around and did like drag shows in the kind of like shopping centre fashion place. That is so cool. That must have been great fun. It was super, super fun. It was really good. <laughs> oh, that's me. Why didn't you tell me there were photos? This is fantastic. <laughs> Mel's on my Instagram. Yeah, so you that's me and look that's Faye. Great. Both of you look great. Um, and on that, you see the Ooh. sun there. Yeah. On my top. Crow made that for me. Crow? Dude, yeah. That's fantastic. That's astonishing. Yeah, that's so they embroidered it and like you can't really see from there, but it's like one of those suns, but I all of the it. like yeah, rays it's like the, have it's high like heels on them. Louis Quatorze, you know, that. Uh, yes. Yes. And so is the costume reminds me of that whole Sun King thing going on. That's fantastic. You look wonderful. Oh, thank you. 
And there's actually one of the, one of the costumes that I had on display just as part of like the um, display, I guess, was that um, drag Garrick costume that I made. <laughs> yes, <laughs> absolutely. <laughs> brilliant that's great oh my goodness you hadn't must have had so much fun oh it was so good it was really really fun they had us there all weekend um and yeah we were just playing like fun 80s music and sort of prancing around is there a is there a, a drag community by that I mean artists uh, in in Melbourne they like you know each other oh yes absolutely um it's huge in Melbourne and Sydney um, there's a really really big community here of just like drag performers and especially Melbourne has quite a high percentage of drag kings and sort of like um, you know gender non-conforming drag performers as well yeah. so just playing yeah. this idea of like presentation um, yeah. yeah it's really yeah. good you are the first drag king I ever heard of now <laughs> I, it's like you've opened up this whole vista to me which I'd never noticed it didn't know existed you know all I knew was like RuPaul and Divine and people who had sort of that, that kind of area, which is traditional drag queens. Um, and this wonderful ball that my mother used to go to back in the 70s and called the Alternative Miss Universe. And so I saw all those drag people uh, doing their thing in London, which was amazing. Um, but, uh, not Peter Logan, that was his brother. One of the Logan brothers anyway, who organized it all. And I would watch it on TV. It was so much fun because we get videos. Um, I was far too late to, to go to those things. But that was, it sounded so much fun. My mum was all hooked into that whole world and knew all these people. And they would all come oh, to that's some so of them. cool. So I was familiar with the scene as a six, seven-year-old. Because um, my mother was all hooked into, her tendrils were hooked into that, that whole cr cr crazy bunch of guys. Um, who were all putting on amazing clothes and, go, and going and being outrageous at these parties. I think there was probably too many drugs too for me as a child to be there. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot, a lot going on. But the, you can look it up uh, online. Yeah. It's called the Alternative Miss Universe and it's quite mind-blowing. It's ancient now, but they have a catwalk and a competition and uh, it's usually in a big tent in one of the parks in London. And it was an amazing uh, uh, early 70s, late 60s event, uh, just celebrating drag. Um, and one of the kind of, it was, it was part of the activist movement at the time for the whole, I'm I, looking back on it, the, the whole identity crisis that was developing. Um, but it was, uh, it's, it was great fun. And it's, uh, it'll, it, they kind of go on quite a long time because I, when I was in, in Australia, because I watched just YouTube for eight <laughs> Yeah. I yeah, had I time to watch one of these things for three hours, <laughs> even the boring bits. But yeah, Alternative Miss World. Uh, might have been the Alternative Miss Universe. I'm not sure. It'll be one or the other. Obviously, the alternative is the important thing. I'm so glad to catch up. I hope we do again soon. Um, I'm going to move on because I know I've got to talk to... to I, I'm, I'm being told to... <laughs> about time because <laughs> I can ramble on for hours look um, understandable it was lovely to catch up thanks Randy right back at you thanks Randy all right we're gonna go talk to Sarah it's been quite a while since Sarah was with us hi Sarah can you hear me my uh, internet's being a little wonky I can absolutely hear Hello. you Yes, there you are. In frozen in, in time like this, which you probably can't see me saying that. Okay. There you are. We'll we'll muscle through. We'll make it. We'll find a way <laughs> to keep going. It's lovely seeing your face, but turn off your camera because you're frozen, and it'll 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 free up some bandwidth. Now we'll give it a couple I'm of seconds to go. Keep talking until you can hear me. I can hear you just <laughs> fine. I can hear you just fine. You make br the bridal accessories. That's me. That's you. How are you? How is it going? Oh, quit and come. Quit and come back. And we'll wait for you. Sure, I'll try that. I'll be yeah, right. Yeah, try it. We'll talk Bye. amongst ourselves. Yeah. Well, we're waiting for her to come back in. Um, how many of you guys saw the news about the new uh, James Bond books? So I was telling Sid about this earlier today, earlier before this show started. 
Uh, this is the 60th anniversary of the first Bond movie, not the first book, but the first movie. Um, and in honor of that, they are releasing, they commissioned a new trilogy. And the writer has several new 00 agents that they are bringing in. And 009 is named Sid Bashir. That's very funny. That's just completely weird. <laughs> I think it's awesome. Okay, so we've got Sarah back in. Okay, I'm on my phone now. <laughs> we'll see how this Boom, works. Oh, there you are. You are Way better. Yeah, no problems at all. That's fantastic. We were happy to wait for you. <laughs> how are you? I'm doing okay. Good, I'm glad to hear it. Is the, is, is the wedding business picking up a bit now? It is, it's wild right now. We are actually about to start two new employees next week because the oh demand my. has gotten so insane. Congratulations, that's fantastic. The combs that I showed you guys a picture of before that I had the huge stack of, yeah. I've been ordering those steadily at like 30 to 50 a month. The big retailer that orders those Oh my goodness. Recently, they're starting to order like a hundred a month. And I'm like, no, how do you have time to make week, these? Guys. Absolutely. Because if you, if, if I, I, don't I remember have time. I'm so behind on everything. Oh my God. The things you showed us were so intricate. They took, must have taken hours to make. So I don't know how you make 50 a month. It takes all of my time. <laughs> oh, poor you. How many people work, are working for the company? To actually hands on with making stuff. Right now, besides the boss, we have four. Wow! Can you have you got anything around? Because there might be a bunch of people here who've never seen anything that you've done, and just want to give them a sense of a frame of reference of what we're talking about and how I amazing. I have a whole stack of drafts stamped and sealed in my inter, in my email, and I just oh, sent them to Mel with a bunch of work pictures in it. Good luck, Mel. Have 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 you been apart from the fact you've been worked off? Eat. How, 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 are you, how are your family? I mean, I, I'm curious because we've all been hit by this tsunami of virus, and um, I, I know that people have some people having a really hard time. Yeah, some of my cousins and other distant, more distant relatives have gotten it and stuff, but my close family are all very vaccinated and very cautious. They're okay. They're like, Good. Are you? Do you work remotely? No, there's too many like little physical bits and pieces that I need to get my hands on in order to do my job. Hey, there's some of my stuff. They, there it is. God, they're so beautiful. This one is special because this is one of the very first ones that I've ever designed the finished piece all by myself. It's wow. just so gorgeous. The, you've chosen just the right materials because it just comes alive with the pearls, highlights, and it's just so pretty. Wow. Oh my goodness. They're just so beautiful. I mean, it's just this all you can say. Thanks. <laughs> Amazing. Oh, yeah. That's a big pile of the stuff that makes those combs. So, yeah. The day before there is a big stack of combs, there is a big pile of stuff. So, you say waiting to be baked. What does that mean? It literally, I have a toaster oven like on the corner of my desk, and I just yeah. put them in the toaster oven at like 260 degrees Fahrenheit for like 20 minutes. Yeah. And so that, these these things are soft and then you have to bake them to bake, make them hard. Is that right? Yeah. It's like it's clay and you squish it until it's a flower and then you put it in the oven. And when it comes out, it's basically plastic. So you don't you make every single petal. Yes. That is. If you were to order the petals, you would be ordering them from me. <laughs> Shut the front door. <laughs> that is amazing. That is just amazing. And how do you get that pearlescent? Are you painting those, or you put? Is it, do you put a glaze on them? Those ones have a little like dust powder that I think maybe is a component of a glaze that is intended for ceramics. But it was something my boss bought just because it said clay on it, and was like, yeah. "Do you want this?" And I put it on a flower, and it made it shiny. So she was like, "Cool, make shiny flowers." <laughs> wow, you know, if I was getting married, I might wear that stuff. That's how cool that stuff is. Oh, we've oh, transitioned yeah. directly into a different thing. That's fine. Oh, I love that too. I love the I love quilts. I've got a whole fetish yeah. for quilts. Totally. The quilt was that. actually my excuse for signing up tonight because I finally finished this thing. Oh my goodness, it's beautiful. This is like the inciting incident that has led to me being in the club. 
because it was working on this quilt that I was like, I need way more TV to watch. And that was when I started watching DS9. Yeah. I've been working on this since August of 2020. Oh my goodness. I just finished it. It's lovely. Is that is that cat permanently attached or is it alive? Uh, <laughs> he Did is alive. It? <laughs> but he is, may as well be permanently attached because it is his favorite thing in the world. And as soon as I laid it out to try and take pictures, he was like, all of these pictures are going to have me in them. Oh, God, that's so great. That is beautiful. Wow. The fun thing about this quilt is that it's um, completely handmade. It's a type of quilt making called English paper piecing, where you basically right. fold the pieces of fabric around pieces of cardstock and then sew them together down the edges by hand and then take the cardstock out. And then I quilted the whole thing by hand. So while watching this, or not wow. watching, while making this quilt, I got through all seven seasons of DS9 and all seven seasons of Voyager and like three seasons of TNG. And it's like oh, 600 hours, this quilt. My goodness. So I mean, even the reverse of it is fit to put on, you know, my bed. It's just, <laughs> it's beautiful. Hello, cat. Hello, little cat. Yeah, it's, it's your quilt. It's mine. <laughs> we do every time I would get it out to work on it. Like, if any part of it was laying flat, he would be laying on the flat part. Or if I just <laughs> had it over my lap, he would like quite right. Under it. Quite right. It's, uh, it's it's got you all over it, and you can just even when you're not there, you can just you can <laughs> snuggle right up. Have you always been into uh, making stuff, even when you were a little one? Apparently. <laughs> yeah. You've been messing around with materials all your life. Mm -hmm. I, I did a lot of like craft related 4-H things throughout yeah. my childhood. It's, it's the 4-H's are like head, heart, hands, health. And there's oh, like a, like a yeah. Boy Scout-y kind of thing. Yeah. Instead of that being like a general survival skills oriented, you have like a project. So people will sense. raise livestock or they'll learn to sew clothes or I did one for cake decorating one time. Wow. Wow. That's yeah. so cool. I My brother just sent me a, 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 a an art piece, a quilt, which I, I bought in South Africa. Um, and it was um, it was made by a, a village of a, 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 a village there. And they do the story of their village, but they sew it onto a piece of material and um they as art and then they sell it to, hopefully to raise money for the village so that they can buy seeds and stuff um and it is i've, I've got it here i'll show you but it's um it's so beautiful i just love anything that has that kind of heart poured into it if i stand back here can you see that yeah Do you, does that make any can you see that it would, i mean if i go in close you can see just what sort of detail they have yeah that's a, a scene and it morphs into another scene and then it goes into another scene. And this is all hand sewn, embroidered on a piece of black material. They're drying their clothes. I mean, it's just astonishing. And no one really does that here. Um, and people should do stories on, on material because they're so beautiful. That's great. Well, so you've really never stopped working. You've just been boom, 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 busy at it. Up and at them the whole time. I go to work and I make stuff, and then I come home and I make other stuff. And you make other stuff. <laughs> so this actually, this is, it's really keeps you occupied in a way that you never don't find yourself getting lonely, especially during the last two years, which is a terrible, terrible time. Yeah. <laughs> I think you've got plenty to do. You're okay. You're safe. No one's going to accuse you of not being la of being lazy, not not doing enough to contribute. That's uh, you. <laughs> just <laughs> astonishing uh well i can't thank you enough sir for coming back and showing us some more stuff because it's just so inspiring to see your work it really is it's fantastic <laughs> the place latest development learning to knit blame robin it's all good that's great that's great we, we, we'll 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 think of something to we'll we'll put we'll get everybody put to work we'll get you we'll give something we'll think of something not time consuming I'll think of something that we can all collaborate on at some point. Thanks, Sarah. It's really lovely to catch up and talk to you. It's good to see you.
Thanks, Sarah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Yes, we'll think of something at some point. At some point. Maybe next week. We'll have to Maybe talk. next week. Okay, let's go talk to Laura. Hello. Hello, Laura, from Hello. just outside of Massachusetts. I'm Boston, I mean. Yes, yes. <laughs> How are you, Laura? I haven't seen you for yonks. I, I know it's a, been almost a year, I think. I don't know. It has. <laughs> it has. What's it going has. on in your world? No, not much. I'm surviving, hanging in there. <laughs> I'm glad to hear it. I'm glad to hear it. Um, That's all we can do right now. So yeah, <laughs> absolutely. I often wonder because obviously, you know, when we all started, and you were one of the people who was around when we all started this thing, um, yeah. over, kind of two years ago now, or feels like nearly two years ago, come April. You. Um, it. I, there are a few people who I haven't seen again, mm -hmm. and they were here quite regularly in the early days, and then they just vanished and i kind of can um, the part of me like is like are they okay i'm sure they are and they've just found something fun to do but <laughs> you know you just you do a part of you worries but you, you how are your family you all is, is everybody good uh january is rough but that's okay we're yeah. in february it's okay yeah. <laughs> it's a new month <laughs> yeah we're getting out of it we're, we're emerging kind of. into the, the uh, yeah so warmer weather I'm looking outside at 20 inches of snow, so I don't know. No, what it's crazy. Here. <laughs> it's crazy. You've got you had a huge snow last week. We we only had four yeah. inches. Yeah, I was out there all weekend shoveling. <laughs> that was my weekend. So yeah, it gets unfun quick, doesn't it? Mm, yeah. yeah, it's good exercise though. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> Evan, yeah, and when you're not leaving the house so much, yeah, it's great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Have you been to any cool concerts? Uh, is, is, that, is that kicking off or is that still dead? I know Massachusetts is pretty strict about all that stuff. Uh, they're not that strict. Uh, I they're think not that strict. <laughs> no. So I think last time I spoke, I was like, uh, I didn't know what I was going to do if they came back. And I think between August and like December, I went to like 20 or so. <laughs> I, I, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> 20 it's, concerts that's uh yeah that's about that's not even like half my average usually so we're kind of back to normal did you catch covid no how did you pull that <laughs> off uh masking uh did vac you go, like in a space suit <laughs> no every, everyone was wearing masks every every venue that's... has to have a vaccine requirement or a pcr test laura not... that is fantastic <laughs> That so is. it's not like the most safest place, but if you're putting yourself out there and making sure you're safe for other people, for sure, it can be fun. Absolutely, you know, I completely agree. I think you're in ingenious for having found a way to do the thing you love to do. That's yeah, in one of the I mean, it, times. it doesn't. I mean, it helps that when uh, the shows I go to are probably like what, like three hundred people, maybe sometimes two hundred. Like it sounds yeah. like a lot with COVID, but compared to like 10,000 or what, you know, it's yeah. a little bump. Like, and I feel like people, like the, we, the people I go to shows with, we all get it. Like we're all like there because we like to be there, you know? So we want to keep it safe for everybody. For sure. And it's quite, it's, 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 I mean, it's fairly antithetical to the punk scene. Is <laughs> I know, yeah, yeah, to keep everybody safe, but no, everyone's kind of like, no, this this is this is the one thing that we have to like follow the rules on. I'm sorry. I just, I'm just imagining like you know in the 70s and 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 the Sex Pistols on stage and really thrashing out you know, God save the Queen. Uh, it's a fascist <laughs> regime and the camera panning around to the audience and everybody's got masks on. <laughs> I know. Is it, is it kind of surreal? It is. It is a little bit. I imagine what they're seeing. Like they're obviously like happy that people are there when they're yeah. wearing masks yeah. because uh they can't be well some bands are still wearing masks like if they're not yeah. seeing like i saw uh jeff rosenstock his whole band was wearing masks except for him on stage wow. for an hour and a half <laughs> wow which is i mean insane. i can imagine that she's quite cool i can imagine the whole lady gaga routine or madonna routine with masks and that's all part of the whole vibe of the thing, you know, and sort of all that sort of, but. It's a, it it's a vibe for sure. <laughs> yeah. But you've enjoyed yourself and you've got back together with your friends and yeah. um, life is good from that point of view. 
it is i got i've i've got together with some old friends i found a bunch of new ones that we've been uh talking online uh, various places and we we've met up in a bunch of places like connecticut and philly and seen some shows so it was a lot of fun even getting to travel a that... little bit <laughs> <laughs> so what's the best concert you went to what was your most rec- what was the most fun evening or day whenever it was you had i guess the 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 coolest and like the best one was I went down to Philly to see uh, Laura Jane Grace. She's a singer of Against Me. They're one of my favorite bands ever. But she actually played at the Four Seasons Total Landscaping. She played there. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, Great. it was the best day. <laughs> <laughs> they like opened, they opened up their parking lot and they just put a, like they, a stage on it. And she played, it was great. <laughs> that is awesome <laughs> I, I drove there like i left at six in the morning she played uh she played an evening show and then we saw her again and then i left <laughs> i got back at four in the morning again <laughs> that is so cool it was a lot of fun the like the company was all there just hanging out they had like a local philly uh beer company they had like shirts and everything that poster right there Dude, that's the poster from Ooh, that show. good pointing good reverse point technique thanks hey there oh, yeah. working at this <laughs> but that was really cool i didn't think i and why why would you suspect that to happen i don't know <laughs> and the other one in december there is a record label out of boston called counterintuitive records and they held their winter show uh, showcase like at the middle of december and it was 10 bands or so that played <laughs> that played yeah they played all like one after another they all had 30 minute sets it's re- it was really good that was a festival yeah it was a mini festival <laughs> that's so cool that a record company does that and do you what do you guys talk, i mean do you guys how deep do you get into uh, into the music of it because i'm because punk to a lot of people is just like that's just very noisy um and it's you know supposed to be disruptive but and I'm sure now that it's so kind of established and, and it's such a, yeah. it's, you know, there's a, a formal lineage now. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you, what do you guys talk about? Do you talk about technique? Do you talk about people that you think are just amazing musically or do you talk about the lyrics? What, what are the things you guys like dig? What are the things that you go, wow, that's a, uh, how do you, how do you land on a favorite or is it just pure intuition pure instinct just what it's a lot of intuition and a lot of just like hey check this band out you like you like listening to them you might like this they're kind of the same vein yeah um it's a lot of just like talking like that just like (laughs) or for me like when i when i listen to something i listen to like the music first before the lyrics right because lyrics hit me differently like i it it doesn't matter but like if it's like a good if it's got a good like rhythm or yeah anything i'll listen to it and then go from there That's and then really dig cool. deeper into it yeah yeah because django my son is um he's he just he's really taken an interest in in making his own music and he does it all by himself on on his midi which is really great because mm. he's um he's he's learning how to how to do it all and he's incredibly fast at learning it and the few songs that i've he's been happy enough to let me hear <laughs> have been just really really good um, and it is amazing thing. I, I don't know if you have an interest in playing music as well. Um, yeah, but he did this. Ama- you do guitar. Yep. He did. I took him to the guitar place in in on Hollywood uh, Boulevard in in Los Angeles, and I was like, "Dude, pick your pick whichever one you want." You know, and there's some of these things were like two thousand mm-hmm. dollars, and he looked around. And he was like, "I want this one," and it was like seventy nine dollars. Yeah. And I was like, you sure you want that one? And he went, yeah, because I have to learn from this status to get to that status. <laughs> It'll be a complete waste of 1,800 yeah, bucks yeah, yeah. buying that one. <laughs> no, I, I, hear, I hear that for sure. Well, I went to a music shop just to grab some strings and stuff, um, just like equipment. I was like, because I'm going to be I'm going to be there all weekend by myself. So I was like, I'm going to get like a bunch of stuff and play guitar all weekend. And I walked out with an acoustic guitar, which I've never, I've never had an acoustic guitar. And I was like, oh, that one on the wall, that's a hundred bucks that I don't care about right now. Yeah. Cool. <laughs> really I was like, smart. it comes with a case. Great. Like, I'll take it. <laughs> that's really cool. 
Um, I've been asking this of everybody, but he said, your family okay and everybody, is, is, is that, that whole kind of thing okay? Is everybody healthy? Uh, no, I, we'll get there. It's, <laughs> my okay. dad's just getting over COVID. Yeah, okay. Whew. Well, I hope they're all okay. I hope they all, you we know. Do. I hope nothing. we can get things together for a better March. That's, that's what we're looking for, March right now. <laughs> that's what yeah. we're looking towards. Absolutely. I'm just looking for, you know, I'm waiting for spring and for the warmth to come and for to push everybody outdoors. And this will be yeah. a lot. This will be a much cooler situation. I'm really glad. It's lovely to see you again. I'm really glad you've gone to tons of concerts and you've Thank you. dived back into your world and get a your sense of normality. Thank you. We're, we're trying. Yeah. We're trying. We got yeah. some on the horizon, too. So it's, it's all good. Things are happening. Good luck, Laura. Thank, I'm really thank you. glad. Enjoy. Have, thank you great summer and hopefully we'll see you well maybe if we don't see it's because you're just having such a darn good time so uh, maybe <laughs> <laughs> i'll talk to you, you later thank you, you. thanks laura all right it's chaos time shannon's up shannon got here shannon's yeah. microphone is not working I'm just, i've got to put it on box mode so i can see her struggling to to switch on her microphone that's a cruel thing isn't it where are you at <laughs> now i see you did i fix it Yes, you fixed it. Yes. <laughs> You're amazing. Hi. Hi. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> it's good to see you. Thank you. It's good to see you too. <laughs> You've uh, is it my imagination or have you grown your hair? Is there a lot more hair going on back there? There is a lot more hair now. <laughs> yeah. A lot more hair going on back there. How are you? I'm good. I'm Tank good. Wando person. Yes. <laughs> have you got? Have you yeah. been? You, you you're obviously back in class. Yeah, yeah. We're back in in person classes, which is good. I've actually got I've got work straight after this, so that's why I'm in my uniform now. Okay. Yeah, I figured. I figured. Yeah. <laughs> Unless you know you're gonna do a class for us, which would be kind of cool actually one day. Well, they it'd be hard to actually see us do stuff. They'd be like, wait a minute, wait a minute, you did that wrong. Oh, I mean, I did like a year of virtual classes, so it's just more <laughs> of the same. No just, problem. Fine. No <laughs> problem. I can teach four-year-olds over Zoom. I can, I'm pretty sure I can teach anybody at this point. How do you teach four-year-olds over Zoom? That is like an impossible, that's like herding kittens. Yeah. That <laughs> pretty, is not a much thing. Is. <laughs> That's fantastic. How has it been in the last few? You're back in the in the gym. Back in, I guess it's I call I guess you call it the dojo. What do you call it? it in Korean, it's a dojang. So dojang. Okay, cool. Dang, yeah. Dang, J A N G. Yeah. Dang, dojang. Okay, perfect. I'm probably not pronouncing it right either, but uh, you, I definitely am not. Um, so you're going into the back. You're back in the dojang, and yeah. you've got youngsters. Yes, got all the, a bunch of new ones coming in, which is good. It's sort of like in that weird middle bit at the moment because we've got ones who are like, no, I don't want to come back because COVID. And then we've got all these other ones who are like, we haven't done anything for two years. We want to do this. Wow. Like, okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a super spreader. Yeah. <laughs> God bless their cotton socks. We took Django back in the day and Buster. Buster was very good at Taekwondo. And he, we took him back when, and Django was four, you know, he was that age. And they quite well spaced anyway. You know, they're never, they're not on top of each other. You need space to fling your arms out. Yeah. I'm not sure flinging your arms out is a technical term, but no, I'll, no, that's I'll go it. with that. <laughs> they would always have to shout at you to, to make sure they heard what you were going to say. And they had to shout at you to, they were all, it was quite sweet listening to a bunch of four or five year olds shouting at the top of their lungs to the master or the, the person taking the class, um, who was like you, a really good Taekwondo expert. Um, but it was quite sweet listening to them all shouting in unison. Do you get, they all have to do that for you too? Yeah, we do it with like the little kids at the start of classes. We um, make them do like a attention stance. So stand their feet together and then bow at the start of class. And so yeah, you get yeah. this like group of like five and six year old kids all screaming as loud as they can, like, attention! <laughs> <laughs> as loud as they can. And then they like 
when they bow, we get them to say good manners. And you just see them kind of like throwing their heads to the floor. And I'm just, I'm just waiting for one day where a kid is just going to like flip themselves over because they just like <laughs> so intense with it. They just have no concept of like how their body works and how physics <laughs> or anything works like that. So it's just like, there's no consequence to this. Oh. <laughs> That's fantastic. <laughs> So what um, what's on the horizon for you? So you 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 you've got this. That's you've, you're back in back at work. Winter's coming again. Um, what's uh, what are your plans? You're just gonna have you got plans in that sense? Is there something you're gonna? Is there a change that you're gonna get? Not a change of career or anything, but just like is this something you're looking forward to? Some kind of expression. Um. I'm hopefully starting um, acting school again this weekend. Great. Yeah. <laughs> wow. That's a really good idea. Yeah. I was doing a course um, through uh, NIDA here, the National Institute of Dramatic yeah. Art. Yeah. Um, but it ended up getting cancelled last year. So I got cool. moved to this year's intake. So hopefully That's that fantastic. starts again. <laughs> I think it's a, you know, I think acting is one of the coolest things to do. I mean, I don't think you're um, particularly introverted, but if people are introverted, especially, um, and they can screw up the courage um, to go to acting, to do some acting is such a good idea because you have to do things that scare the living daylights out of you. But it's not like jumping off a cliff, you know, with a parachute or it's not actually dangerous. <laughs> it's, um, it's just, you're just brave for doing it. I think that's wonderful. Honestly, I think I'd rather the jumping off the cliff sometimes. <laughs> I know. It's, it's, it's really dangerous because you actually risk yeah. being humiliated, which is one of the worst things that can possibly happen. But it's very good humiliation. It's very like, so, sort of character building um, to make an ass of yourself in front of a bunch of people. <laughs> that I, I, oh I do it regularly. So it, but it, I've kind of got used to it now that I'm like, ah, I'll make a dick of myself in front of anybody. Do you have any idea what the acting class entails? Um, this one is, it's a year long course. So it's a, it's a studio class. Um, yeah. The first term that we do is pretty much just a lot of uh, voice and body work, like Good. movement, like that. Yeah. Um, the one that I'm doing is specifically for um, screen acting as well. Right. So acting for camera and things like that. Yeah. I know we do accents at some point, so that'll be interesting. Because <laughs> I can't Absolutely. do accents. <laughs> Nor can anyone. <laughs> I mean, they basically say they can, but accents are just whatever anyone wants to hear. That's, uh, yeah, you'd be good with accents. You'd be just fine. Screen acting is unusual because you expect for screen acting that you're going to get to relax regarding all the stuff you're learning with voice and body because you're just you know they're going to look at this but screen is absolutely the opposite it, you really need to act with your body on screen in a way that you just would never imagine you needed because the camera notices every aspect of you as, as a person or at least if the director is the person who's behind the camera is it notices then the audience will notice and the more information you can give in terms of your body means the less information you have to bother giving with this. And this is the bit where everybody screws up. Everybody's great until they open their mouth. And the more you open your mouth, the, the more likely you will, it is that you will hang yourself. So I'm always looking for parts where I say as little as possible because I can say so much more without opening this idiot thing. Um, and that's, I find that's the thing. So I, when you get, when you do do lessons on voice and, and, body take them really seriously if you think they're worth taking seriously um, obviously that would be up to you but it's this is the this is the equipment um, and then this bit is sort of the icing on the cake um, I didn't like it when I was acting school because when I was there for three years back in the day and we did a lot of voice and a lot of movement and we did all that crazy stuff you read, read about like pretending to be oranges and things which is <sighs> for four hours you know I'm so glad I did it because I now rely on that stuff um also I think people have to have a certain physicality to be on stage there's something human about the connection between actor and, and, and audience on stage um you know that kind of a 
attraction thing kicks in much quicker. Right, I'm going to stop talking because I've realised I've just talked for like 45 minutes. Hi. So, <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> but I'm really excited that you're going to do that. That's going to be great fun. I'm really looking forward to it. I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's going to, you're going to have so much fun. That's going to be terrific. I did mainly um, improv in high school. So I went to like heaps of like improv competitions and things like that and that that was just so it's worlds different to trying to do um acting with scripts and things like that absolutely well yeah. have a look there's a there's a there's a prologue a uh, Shakespeare prologue called Henry VIII it's a really tremendous speech because it's gender neutral and it's very much a soliloquy to the audience saying hey guys uh, what we're about to show you, you know, I come no more to, you know, to make you laugh. Things now bear a serious and a weighty brow, such mighty things. As, I can't remember it all from off, off the top of the thing, but it's a beautiful speech. And it, it, it's just about how politics works. It's about, because it's about Henry VIII and Wolseley and all those guys, and about how great men meet misery and uh, about how dangerous politics is. But it's, it's a very succinct speech that you can just do. So I would read it because in about a year, you're going to have to do uh, in about six months. They're going to ask you to do something. But if you're already, you're unintimidated by it and you read it from time to time, because it's really not complicated Shakespeare. It's not like weird words like a dox on me and all this sort of stuff. None of that stuff. It's just normal. And just read it and just get used to reading it every now and then and say it the way you like to hear it and it, it, it will inform you how to say it probably but uh, it'll be a lot of fun that, that's my recommendation I'm, I'm jazzed for you doing that that is really awesome that's really tremendous uh, but it's so nice to roll up with you Shannon it really is it's great to see you again and talk to you um, I'm so sorry I didn't get to see you guys and Randy in um, Melbourne um, I was so kind of looking forward to doing that but just no, wasn't going to work out. Wasn't going to happen. We might go back to Australia again if we get the second season. So there's always a chance. Um, it's great talking to you and have, have a great class. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Shannon. Thanks, Shannon. We actually have um, a uh, complimentary person coming on. Jen's going to come on um, to talk about working with Sarah. Oh, realize, what a I great realize, idea. What a yeah, lovely I didn't realize these, these two things were connected. So that's so fantastic. So when Sarah was showing off her um, little bridal hair clips. You have one? I have two. <laughs> oh, my goodness. You are the lucky one because she doesn't have time to make them for anybody. No, <laughs> no. This was during, um, I think when uh, I think when you were away, she was doing the arts and crafts and she was showing off all the way that, that she did these. And I don't know if you can see, but the detail is they are insane. Really gorgeous. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. So I just wanted to say thank you, Sarah. If she's still kicking around. Oh, I'm sure she is. Or maybe not. She might be, she might have to work. <laughs> <laughs> She's got 400 of the things to make by tomorrow uh, lunchtime. That's awesome. When she popped on and she was showing her stuff, I was like, I've got those. <laughs> <laughs> that That's is it. so great. That is so great. Is that your basement? The, yes, it is my basement. <laughs> this is where it's freezing? Yeah, that's why I'm wearing a big hefty <laughs> sweater and I have an extra thing. And <laughs> It doesn't look like a basement. It looks like a proper place my basement looks like you know you couldn't live there so, yeah it's a finished basement so this is my office area um uh, yeah you only get to see a little bit but yeah it's, you know and that's, that's all the wedding stuff oh back yeah there. this is all your stuff and you're <laughs> getting married in may mm -hmm. this is going to be exciting yeah i'm not stressed not stressed <laughs> i haven't met zach your your fiance he don't I'm drag now. Try. He'll never forgive. He'll never forgive you. You might yeah. have to actually get pre-divorced if that's the thing you can do. You can call off the wedding. He'll be like, no, no, it's a terrible thing to do to me. So just quickly 
point that round again? Just want to see. There's looked like a lot of stuff. Is there anything there that you don't want anyone to see? Because just quickly and quickly back. Because um, is this like surprises or something? Oh, what's that? That's astonishing. It's blue. Is it blue light? Then it went white. A blue violin. Ah, okay. There's a theme developing. So there's, <laughs> there was definitely then... something, a blue violin, which was fantastic. Mm -hmm. And that is a white rose. Is, am I supposed to know better? Is there something more than that? <laughs> cards. So that one's for cards. So that one's then, for cards. And then this is for the centerpieces. That's what um, that is. It's beautiful. I couldn't figure out what it was at first. Okay. And the, and the blue violin? That's just my blue violin. I'm just so happy about <laughs> it. <that. laughs> okay. <All right. laughs> There's nothing mysterious about that. <laughs> no, well, you asked what was in my background. I have a blue violin, a bunch of wedding stuff, some centerpieces. It, it just looked like a hell of a lot of stuff. That really just looked like <laughs> a lot of piles, neatly organized piles of stuff. That is really cool. <laughs> Thank you for catching us up and seeing your blue violin. That's something you know, I don't see many. I have never seen a blue violin. So that's the thing. That I actually picked up in London. Right. In two th yeah, in 2009. Um, there was um, a little... Um, music store they had a bunch of different colored violins in the window and I saw the blue one and I, I just it was one of those went yeah I give it yep yep I want that do you, do you play it <laughs> do you play it or do you, is it just for, for display purposes I play average Ooh, I better. just play for fun <laughs> that's good that's a big deal okay I'm not we'll great get you back to play no. yeah but I like it. Uh -uh. just a two hour just a two hour quick concert <laughs> nothing no. stressful <laughs> no. Okay. No, you're no off please save me. You're off the hook. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Well, Jen, I've got you written down for next Tuesday night. That's our next meeting. <laughs> so we won't have any sign ups. It'll be just a concert with Jen. No. <laughs> We are opening up to the, anyone who wants to come too. There might be a few thousand. <laughs> okay. we have, we'll have the big room. <laughs> Oh no, she's had a heart attack. If only we could be that cruel. That would be yeah. funny. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Thanks for sharing that stuff too. That's really cool to see those things. All right, folks, we're going to wrap it up. So our next meeting is Tuesday the 8th. Also a reminder that we are still doing a fundraiser for Andy's birthday, Andrew Robinson's birthday. He's a Valentine baby. He's turning 80 this year and we have a GoFundMe set up uh, to benefit Save the Children. Uh, Elmi and Amy are in charge of that and they have to keep raising the goal so good job everybody yeah yeah and several of the ds9 cast picked it up today and posted it around social media so the, that's the goal great happened. again all right that's all we've got for tonight thanks everybody thank you everyone it's great we'll to see, see you everyone again time. see you next good tuesday night.